Hello, and welcome to the PC America Reseller Training Series. My name is Adam Moore, and I am the PC America Sales Engineer that will be conducting today's training. Today, we're going to be discussing the on cloud web portal. Before we begin this overview, I would like to go over some of the benefits and expectations of the web portal. The web portal gives you back office functionality at your fingertips as long as you have an internet connection. You also have the ability to create inventory items for one store at a time or multiple stores at a time. You'll be able to also transfer items from store to store, create purchase orders, and receive purchase orders directly from the web portal. You'll also have the ability to view reports for all locations or just for a single location. You'll also have the ability to export these reports directly from the web portal. At PC America, we host all the servers for the web portal. This should give you peace of mind because you will not have to worry about hardware costs or management concerns. Once activated to the web portal, you will have the ability to access the web portal from anywhere and anytime as long as you have an internet connection. You'll also have the ability to control all locations from a centralized location, meaning when you make any changes to that centralized location, you can either push it to one store or to multiple stores. All locations that are activated to the web portal will be pulling and sending information to the web portal in their real-time 30-minute intervals. This means that your store locations will be constantly updating. Before activating to the web portal, there are three key expectations I would like to go over with you. We have a survey completion, where every end user must complete a survey fully and accurately to begin the web portal activation process. Completion of the survey acknowledges understanding of requirements necessary to achieve the successful web portal activation. Any questions that you have in regards to the web portal must be directed to your account manager. Next, we have database retrieval. If necessary, PC America will schedule a database retrieval with the end user. All POS history and data will be deleted and set to zero. PC America will use the data retrieved to program the web portal template within 10 business days. All data entered after retrieval will be overwritten and lost when activated to the web portal. Last but not least, we have the web portal activation. PC America will schedule an activation date with the end user and contact them to activate to the web portal. On the day of the activation, you want to make sure not to process any credit cards or any transactions. You also want to make sure that you run all necessary reports and make a backup of the database after the retrieval. The most current software version is 12.6 or higher, and a high internet speed connection is required when activating to the web portal. So now that we've gone over the three key expectations of the web portal, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. And that is when activating to the web portal with an existing location, all financial and sales history will be lost. This is why we have you back up the database on the day before the activation. It is recommended to activate to the portal when the location is first open to avoid losing sales and financial data. On the last slide here, we have the two versions of the web portal. We have the basic web portal and the advanced web portal. The basic web portal allows you to only handle reporting and inventory modules. The advanced web portal allows you to handle reporting, inventory, purchase orders, and employee maintenance. Now that we've gone over the benefits and expectations of the web portal, let's begin the overview of the web portal. So now that you know what the web portal is and have a better understanding of the benefits and expectations, let's give you a high level overview of how the web portal works. When you first click on Inventory Management, the first option you see in there is Bump Bar. This will allow you to select the store ID and then edit the Bump Bar for that store. The Bump Bar is a kitchen video system that can be used by the kitchen staff to track orders as they come in and are prepared. Next we have Categories. After selecting a store ID or multiple store IDs, you will be able to configure the categories at that store. Categories are used for detailed reporting. Next, we have departments. The same way you would create departments in Caster's Express or Restaurant Pro Express is the same way you would create these departments on the web portal. So when we click on departments, this will allow you to select your store that you want to create the department for. You'll have the ability to create a department for all the stores at once or just each individual store. The next option we have is items. And items work similar to your departments. After selecting a store ID or multiple store IDs, you will have the ability to configure 
items for every location or for each individual location. So when I click on items, it's then going to make me select my store. At the bottom here, you'll see all of my store IDs listed. At this point, I can now select a store ID or multiple store IDs and create an item. Let's hit next at the bottom of the screen after you make your selection. And now at the bottom, I'll just hit add new item. From here, I'll select standard item, modifier group, mix and match, choice item, coupon, kit or combo, depending on the type of item that you're creating. In most cases, you're going to select standard item. As you can see, the screen resembles your inventory maintenance screen in either Casters or Express or Restaurant Pro Express. After your changes have been made, you then want to hit save at the bottom of the screen. Next, we have item transfer. Item transfer can only be configured through the web portal and they must be received at the store level. Item transfers can only be done if the inventory exists with matching inventory numbers and descriptions at both the original store and the destination store. Let's click on item transfer now. When you click on item transfer, this will make you enter a reason code for the transfer. Let's just enter low stock. Now we're going to hit enter. At this point, you want to enter your original store ID and then your destination store ID, where you're going to be transferring the item to. After your selection has been made, you will then have the ability to add inventory and then submit that inventory. It will then have to be received at the store level. The next option that we see here is kitchen printers, and this is similar to the bump bar setup. Again, you must select your store ID to configure your kitchen printer for that location. And this can only be done for one store at a time. The next option that you see here is purchase orders. Purchase orders can only be done for one store at a time. After selecting a store ID, you will have the ability to create and modify purchase orders for that store. Let's click on purchase orders now. When you click on purchase orders, this will then show you the list of all of your locations or your store IDs. Let's select the store ID now, 02011. This will then show you all of your purchase orders that you either have open or closed. All of these purchase orders are currently closed at the moment. Let's select one and see what it looks like. So at the top of the screen, it will list the vendor, the order type that we have selected, and all of the purchase orders that have been received. You'll know if the item has been received if you see your quantity received button updated. You'll then have the ability to delete purchase orders or to receive your purchase orders. Let's hit cancel here. Next option that you see here is touch screen configuration. Now this works very similar to Casters Express and Restaurant Pro Express. And this can only be done for one store at a time. After selecting a store ID, you'll have the ability to configure the touch screen for the selected store. Let's click on touch screen configuration now. After clicking touch screen configuration, this will then show you the list of all of your store IDs that you have activated to the portal. Let's select the store location now and show you what it looks like. On this screen here, this will list all of the hot buttons that you can create in the system on the restaurant side. You have over 16 buttons that occupy the screen, but over 45 different functionalities that you can set for these buttons. You'll have the ability to make these buttons visible or not visible, just by putting a check mark in this box here. On this same screen, we also have items and departments. Items and departments is similar to your touchscreen configuration in Restaurant Pro Express or Cash Register Express. This will give you the ability to color code your products or to hide your products from showing on your touchscreen. You could also do the same for the items as well. You also have the ability to navigate your items in any order that you'd like just by highlighting the item and using the up and down arrows here. To color code your product is very simple. Highlight the item, then select your color at the bottom of the screen. This will then provide you with a color matrix. After your changes have been made, you can then hit save. You'll also have the ability to alphabetize all of your items in a specific department or all of your items at once. 
Last but not least, under inventory management, we have vendor management. Vendor management allows you to create vendors in the system so you can order your products directly through the software. Vendor management on the web portal will allow you to create vendors and delete vendors. Now that we've discussed how to manage your inventory on the web portal, the next module I would like to move on to is reporting. Now when you click on reporting, we have reporting based on your employees, inventory, and sales. Now let's take a look at our employee reports. When you hit this drop down arrow, they'll show you a list of all the employee reports that we offer on the web portal. There's about 12 reports here listed. Under reporting again, let's click on inventory. And when we hit this drop down arrow, we have about 30 reports listed here. Now what's pretty neat about this report is that we have the ability to export this information from the web portal. So let's say you're using some kind of third party accounting software, you will still have the ability to import our information from the web portal. Let's take a look at an item activity, just to show you what the report would look like. So I can hit this drop down arrow, I can select all of my locations or just one location at a time. Let's do all locations. I also have the ability to run this report just by one department or by all departments. Let's do select all. Now let's set the date range back so we have something to work with. Now let's hit view report. And there you go. This is how the report's going to look, very similar to what you would see in Cast Register Express or Restaurant Pro Express. And like I said, you'll have the ability to export this report in any format that you need to. As soon as you select your format, you would then hit export. And as I mentioned, we also have reports based on your sales. Let's hit this drop down arrow to show you what that looks like. So let's say we want to look at a controller sales report, and this is going to be sales for all locations or for an individual location. Set the date range back so we have something to work with. And let's also select the store ID. Let's select all locations. Now let's hit view report. And there you go. I list my information here. And as I mentioned, we have the ability to export this information for any reason if you need to. So now that we've gone through how to manage your inventory on the web portal, how to view your reports on the web portal, the last tab that I want to go over with you is employee management. Now let's click on employee maintenance. Employee maintenance will allow us to add employees and to delete employees directly from the portal for every location. Let's click on Employee Maintenance now. When you first click on Employee Maintenance, this will then make you select your store. You'll have the ability to select multiple stores or each individual store. Let's select one location so we can add an employee to that one location now. Now let's hit Next. From here, we'll have the ability to add a new cashier or we can edit an existing cashier that's already entered into the system. Let's hit add cashier at the bottom of the screen. On this screen, you'll have the ability to enter your employee ID, your password, display name, and even a card swipe. Once this employee has been added into the system, permissions, job codes and wages, and store association will then open up. Personal info will allow you to store anything such as first name, middle name, last name, social security, phone number, email, birthday, street address, city, state, and zip code. Permissions will allow you to lock down the abilities of what your employees can do and what they can't do in the system. Job codes and wages is basically known as their job profile and what they'll be doing on your establishment. Store association is so you can associate your employee 
with multiple stores rather than just a single location. This now concludes our high-level overview of the OwnCloud web portal. If you would like a deeper and better understanding of the functionality of the web portal, please contact your account manager and we can get that scheduled. Hope everybody enjoyed the session. Have a great day.